Hey everyone, it's Zach with Palantir Research. Palantir stock dropped hard today with everything else after the Fed keeps saying that they're keeping rates high. But nonetheless, Alex Karp went on to CNBC for a full interview talking about AI at the S4G Summit, which is the first of its kind. Basically, it stands for Software for Government. So I'll give my thoughts on that interview, but first want to thank Palantir Chad for getting the whole interview posted on X. I know it's a long one. I just saw the snippet provided by CNBC with only about three minutes, but we always know they tend to bury the full interview somewhere else. So check out the full video there and I'll just cover what I found interesting. So Alex Karp opens up that most industrial revolutions relied on the culmination of many countries growing together and using their different applications of it, but states that this one is focused right now on the United States, which is happening for AI. So he talks about why working with the U.S. government is important for this, since it's so concentrated in our nation. Now, he takes the chance to talk about the Senate AI Insight Forum regarding how legislation can be handled, and make sure to let everyone know that Palantir is an early player for AI with the government, especially around those regulations and guardrails. And for Carp's own thoughts, he thinks the closed-door discussion, which they kept bringing up, is still okay, where he deflects that the real issue is there needs to be a mitigation of the risk for AI, but balancing that with the innovation and development that we can get from it for enterprise and government. So he thought it was a productive discussion overall, and even though it was private, he expects over time that this slowly opens up to the public and with legislation. So it's a very diplomatic answer there, so it shouldn't step on any toes. Now, it was just odd to me personally, at least, that the CNBC newscasters really wanted to focus on why this was happening behind closed doors as if it's very secretive. And in my personal opinion, I don't really care since it's so early. Everyone is just basically figuring out what everyone is doing at this point with AI. But I think getting everyone's ducks in a row first behind closed doors is not a bad idea. And having a consistent and united front on their messaging on how we should move forward as a nation and as an economy on handling AI. And I think that's more important there. But only once we get to that point, we'll let everyone know in the public. So, Carp also notes, amongst the leaders that met together with the political and tech, everyone is a little bit different, and they wanted his thoughts on sitting next to Elon, which Alex Carp made sure to know there are three camps there, one where people think AI is very safe, and people who think it's very dangerous, where he's right in the middle, where if we don't work on it, our adversaries are going to go do it, and they're going to lose our human rights to them, basically, because they'll get ahead of us. So, Carp made sure to push the openness of LLMs on their inputs and outputs, and talks about kill chains as well, to ensure we have some traceability on the kind of decisions that can take lives. So he really wants to make AI an open process here and make sure the public knows that it's not about just automating everything and then just letting humans take control of nothing while the robots do everything for us. He wants that balance there. So in regards to CARP's discussions with politicians though too, Carp is openly admitting that he is open to the regulation of artificial intelligence. And as leaders in AI, he believes, they're responsible for the course that AI can take. The real risks are still there with the dangers, but America can outperform the rest of the world with AI commercial-wise and military-wise if they actually take advantage of this in a smart way. But also, we're not using it necessarily to destroy the world and just to deter our enemies. Now, they hit him with the question that investors want to know about on the business and how it's doing and says there's radical growth in the United States, but slower growth in Europe. This is not a new narrative for us, but looks to see that they will have the same expectations over time. So I'm not really surprised at this. And he doubles down as well that they are in the business of creating value and making a difference in their clients' businesses here. But still, he says it's the early days and they say they cannot keep up with the demand of the AI product right now and says clients are understanding the product and what they need it for and in regards to what AIP provides and that he does give that talking point too that there's been a 50% increase in users using their AIP product month over month. So they hit him then again with how he thinks workers will be replaced by AI. And this is also a tired out question, I believe, in my opinion, where we've heard many times before. And Carp emphasizes the importance of this question and says, typically, these are bashing heads here. It's not a surprise. But he brings up healthcare and factories that AI is to make workers more effective and says it's more of a show and tell question right now to see over time how it actually turns out. But this has been the case every time this question comes up for Palantir and that it's to embrace that humans and even his early example of AI kill chains it shows that Palantir values having humans in the loop here working alongside machines. 
but we just need those machines to handle the mundane, repeatable calculations where they thrive. But either way, it's nice to get more PR out there and confirmation from CARP on the general public of AIP's demand, even if they're the same talking points we've already heard at AIPCon. So all of this is still good news for Palantir in solidifying them as a household name, as an AI solution for the government and commercial sector. It doesn't really mean much or change anything today, honestly, besides that they have a place at the table and still confirming that. And slowly having Palantir become more and more recognizable, as well as Alex Karp, who's showing his face on TV, of course. Now, quantitatively, we all have to see what will happen, especially on the stock and, of course, earnings in the future. But what are your thoughts, though, on this interview here? Are you happy with Karp's interview? Let me know below, and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.